In the previous lesson, we learned how to create a new post or page. But in this lesson, we're going to be learning how to add media. And media can be anything from images that are hosted directly on our website to images that are hosted externally, like on Flickr, uh, or also to YouTube videos or Vimeo videos. And the first thing that we'll be looking at is actually the media library and alt tags, how to actually input pictures into our media library and onto posts. Then we'll be looking at hosting pictures externally, like on Flickr, and why would you even want to do that? And then finally, we're going to be looking at how to actually embed a video from YouTube onto our post. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the media library and alt tags. In the previous lesson, we learned how to add images specifically to our featured images. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually opening up one of the posts that we made. So we're going to go into all posts and we're going to click edit on one of these. And we're going to edit the first one. So now we'll have our post right here. We'll see that this is the same one that we created as our first post. And so we have some content here, our title right here. And let's say we want to add an image right in the middle. How do we do that? Well, we can make some space for it and we just simply go into add media. So if you wanted to add a picture here, we can either look into our media library and we'll see here we have the image that we had in our featured image or we can upload a new file. So we're going to upload a new file and we just drag and drop and I have saved a picture already on my desktop and we just drag and drop that right in here. So after the image has successfully uploaded, we're going to see here the same thing as before, the title, the caption, alt text and description. And I just went ahead and filled them out. Um, and I already talked about them in the previous lesson, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. But just remember that the title, alt text and description are really great for SEO benefit, right? To help get your website indexed on Google better. So you want to kind of use something that is very descriptive for your specific blog post to really give it that quality keywords. But the caption I mentioned before is I didn't fill that out for the featured image because it doesn't show up. Uh, but for this one, we'll see what the actual caption looks like. It's very different depending on the theme, but generally it shows up as a little, um, I guess you can say like a little line underneath in a, in a box around the, around the picture. And some people like the way it looks, some people don't. So that's why this one is completely optional. We'll see how it looks. But if we scroll down, we'll see some other stuff that we didn't see before, which is alignment, link to, and size. So alignment is just simply, you know, do you want it to be left justified, center, or right justified? Um, and you can also choose none. And in our case, let's just say I want it center justified. Uh, link to is when you click on the image itself, where will it link to? Will it link to the actual link of the image itself? Or do you want to link it externally or have no link at all? So for us, we want no link at all. You can put a custom URL, whatever you want there. And this last one's going to be the size. So right here, you just select the size and this is by pixels. So 150 by 150 is a small one up to 5,000, which was the original size. And I'm just going to say, I want a medium size. And I want to mention before I ne didn't necessarily do this for this picture, um, simply because this was an example, but you really want to scale your pictures previously before you actually upload them. So in this case, our original size of our picture was 5,000 by 3,000 pixels. And that's way too large for just a picture onto your post, right? You really want to scale it down to something very manageable and you can do that in Illustrator, Photoshop, or even Paint, whatever you may have on your computer, but make sure to scale it down and also optimize it. So I use something called Image Optimizer and that's on the Mac, um, but you can use really whatever you want to optimize your images. Just make sure that you do use something simply because images slow down your website tremendously. So that's why there's no sense in having a 5,000 by 3,000 pixel image if I'm just going to scale it down to 300 by 200. So after we've selected actually the size we want, we're just going to simply click Insert into Post. And as we can see, it's going to be inserted in the post. And like I mentioned before, this was the caption. You'll see it kind of in a, in a shadow around it, in a box around it, and as well as the little caption below it, which was Sunset Beach. And when we update it, we're going to see what it actually looks like. So we're going to go back to our website um, and we're going to go on to this post that we made and we're going to refresh it. And we'll see down here that this is what the caption looks like, Sunset Beach and the image around it. And so every different theme will, will display it a little bit differently. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is how to host pictures externally. And you may ask, why would you ever want to host a picture externally? If you have the option of a media library, why would you ever need to host an image externally? And really, it goes back to load time. Your server may not be fast enough or have the capabilities of really handling multiple images on a website. So a great thing to kind of decrease that load is to host the image externally. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Flickr, right? You can make a free account with Flickr. You get an entire terabyte free. You just sign in with your Yahoo email and we'll have something like this. And this is my Flickr right here. 
So say we want to embed one of these pictures. Uh, all we're going to do is click on it and we'll go into this little share button down here. Right? And now we can select the size of the picture. So we can go medium, which is the 500 by 300. Uh, that should be fine for our, our purposes. So we're just going to copy that over. So now I'm going to go back to my post and I'm going to want to actually insert this embed code somewhere into here. And say I want to put it right after this paragraph right down here, right? Within the same post that we we're working with before. I can't just paste it in directly. Right? What I'm going to have to do is go into text because this is an HTML code. It's actual code, so we're going to have to go to text. And we're going to find down at the very bottom is where we're going to want it. And we're just going to paste it in right there. Right? And I'm going to describe very quickly what each of these things mean. Um, the first being our href. Href is just showing that you're referring to some sort of website. Right? When they click on the image, just like a link, it's going to actually go to that website or whatever URL linking to it. And so you can really put whatever you want. In our case, let's say we wanted to link it back to our main site to give credit uh, back to whoever made the picture. Right, so in our case, we wanted to link it back to wforall.com. And when we click back on visual, we'll see our image, right? We'll see it right down here. But now what we want is that it kind of looks kind of weird when you have a centered image right here and then you have an image that's justified to the left, right? So how do we actually accommodate that? How do we fix that? What we're going to do is go back to text and we can just make some space. And the way to do this is simply by adding a center. Uh, with the greater than and less than and end that. And remember I mentioned before, um, the backslash means that that's the end of that specific uh, code. So we want it centered for this entire code in between the beginning of the center and the end of the center tag, right? And when we click on visual, we're gonna see that yes, in fact, the image is centered. And so now when we go back to our post, we're gonna see that when we refresh it, we're going to see that we have our original picture from here and we're going to have our other bigger picture that was hosted on Flickr and it's going to be centered as well. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is actually how to embed a video into our post itself. So let's say we wanted to embed this specific video, this Steve Jobs interview onto our blog post. How would we go about doing that? So we click on share and then we click on embed. And we'll see that there's a couple of different options, which is the changing the video size, changing uh, if you want suggested videos at the end, enable privacy mode, and using old embed code. Say I want all these settings to be the same, uh, but in my case, the only thing I want to change is this old embed code. And this is good simply because the old embed code is in the object tag versus the new embed code is in something called iframe. And iframes aren't good for Google to crawl your website. Um, so don't really worry about the specifics of why. In my case, I always use the old embed code, uh, but feel free to use whichever one you want, right? So all we're gonna do in order to add this in, we're gonna go into text and we're gonna paste that in. And we see that the object tag are right here. And that's what we were talking about before instead of the iframe. And all we're gonna do is click update. So that's it for this lesson, but in the next lesson, we're going to be learning about WordPress widgets. And those are things in the sidebar, in the footer, and in the menu bars above. And this is really just going to make our website a lot more full, a lot more functional, and it can really make our website a lot more personalized.